Jurgen and I have known each other for a long time. Uh, we met each other as uh, actually because we both play music. We'll get into this. But um, over the years, uh, we've, we've worked on different projects together. And uh, this last year, it's been really nice that, that him and I have uh, found the common workspace at Showcase in Potsdam, uh, Babelsberg, where we're just down the street from the film studios. Uh, sometimes we work with them on smaller projects, but um, it's been nice uh, working together. And, and for me as, a, as an American, although I've been here for a long time now, over 15 years, and um, just, just seeing the kinds of projects that are coming in and out, and we share experience. And a lot of the work that I've found uh, coming here uh, is, is, you know, how do I work in this German way of thinking, whatever that is, even though I have a German wife and, and uh, I should know better. Uh, and she actually studied at the TU for, and even though she studied at the TU, <laughs> I don't know, man, this guy is directing me. Explain one thing. This is just, they, they hear you, just for yeah, I know. Yeah, this is recorded because we don't have okay. a clip on. All right. But that's pretty sensitive, as you know. Okay. So just, Here we you go. just stay, should I mark your spot? He's too tall, that's the problem. We got, no, we got, <laughs> we got okay. ast asterisks and obelisks Everything's going on here. That's good, I'm good with that. So are you okay back there? <laughs> we'll, 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 in other words, to make a long story short, we, we've, um, it's been uh, an ongoing dialogue, maybe that's interesting uh, for you, is, uh, is the different way that as we create uh, nowadays, uh, there's new technology. You're going to talk about that. Uh, we, we, you know, everyone has the ability apparently to make a film or to or to make a record or or something, and 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 at the same time, uh, there's the cultural differences. Like, uh, for example, uh, how do we feel about becoming a star and being famous or being on our own TV show? So we get a lot of projects coming through. We get a lot of uh, musicians, performers, filmmakers who all have this sort of idea of getting their message out, but, but the question is how do they do it? And we facilitate that through microphones and cameras. But uh, also that's how we've uh, got to know each other and got to work to each other. Hey, let's, let's uh, join forces in a lot of ways where we can. I'm working on bigger projects, uh, television uh, productions. I'm working right now another big, bigger documentary, which is nice to be here on the, at the Berlinale uh, where we're meeting a lot of people. But uh, I'll let him uh, talk about how uh, there's other projects and how we realize them and the kind of people that we meet uh, as we work, okay? So I'll let Jörg, uh, and I'm also going to be his translator for today, yeah. in case he has a few words. Because we speak most of the time and work together in German. We're, we're, yeah. we're not talking, so. Yes, I have uh, two bad news, one good news. Uh, yeah, yeah, this, good, good, good. <laughs> he, he's not good, not good. He's good, okay. Um, one thing, my, my wife uh, visited a friend in Costa Rica, and so I'm alone with my two years old daughter. And I had a lot of work uh, these times, so I, I'm not so good prepared, sorry. You know, but but um, the other uh, bad uh, news uh, is that I have a terrible English, yeah? Uh, but the good news is uh, Matt is with me, yeah? <laughs> and um, so, um, I think maybe it's interesting for you what my whole day life is, yeah? So I want to talk a little bit. I, I found uh, one hour yesterday in German. <laughs> so I was born in the GDR, and it's um, in Cottbus. It's a small town in the east, yeah? And when I was really young, I wanted to become a rock star, and there was no possibility for me because I was a Catholic guy, and <laughs> everybody said, oh, yeah, maybe you get... You can go to school, but not more. No, no, it was, it was okay. It was a nice time. I was nine years when the change comes, when the big... Uh, oh, God. <laughs> and, um, yeah, for me, it was really cool because I didn't grow up in a world with uh, internet and with social media. It was good to grow up in the world. I, I like internet, yeah? It's not, I, I, um, but, um, so my, my focus point on what I want to do was really clear. Music, 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 music. And I started recording with 12 years as a singer in, uh, for church music. So I record church music, I, I sing, and with 14 years I arrange church music. My uncle was the director of the music school. He's a really uh, popular man right now. Also, he's um, the boss who decides which uh, one has talent in German, which one has not in classical. Uh, his name is Gabriel Zinke. And so the music was in the family. And with 14 years, I had my uh, first own orchestra, 
was really cool because um, my uncle got his orchestra and I asked him, oh, can we play November Rain from Guns N' Roses? <laughs> <You know? laughs> and he said, oh yeah, <laughs> if you can write the notes. I said, mm. <laughs> And uh, then I decided to compose uh, own songs, you know, and I had a dream to be famous like André Rieu, yeah. <laughs> um, and so I, I, I made my own uh, music experiences and um, I worked with other orchestras uh, for church music as well and I had a band, we win some prizes, we make some music videos like, like normally it is. Um, but it was really cool, the, the television at this time was really bad, so I had a lot of time to spend in the, in the music school and yeah. And then, I'm finished uh, soon, yeah, and then I made my first musical, well, oh, forgot. With 18 years, uh, it was a musical about a bar. And yeah, my mom told me one time, oh yeah, you're not in the school, you're, you're not good, yeah? And I said, yeah, but I'm good enough, or? She said, yeah, but you can be better, yeah? And I said, oh, I don't want to. Yeah, you hang out in bars and with girls and you know, and, and I said, yeah, but I can't write songs when I, I'm not alive, yeah? I, I can't write about the life when I don't live, yeah? And so I decided to, to sleep on a lake uh, and to going to Norway and to drink beers and I never took drugs, I'm really proud of it. Yeah, that's um, um, a big part of my life. So every musician I, I meet, I ask him, do you take drugs? And then he said, yes, I stop it and then they can work together. Because uh, when you want to make a culture, yeah, you need a clear head, I think. You need structure and I don't like the people who say, oh, yeah, being an artist is so hard. <laughs> because being a worker is hard, you know. Uh, being an artist is a present, and having talent is also a present for me. So uh, don't waste it by, by taking trunks, and you don't need trucks to be inspired. The music inspired you, and the art inspired you. The idea when you can't sleep and when you work, this, this is what inspired you. Yeah? So anyway, I don't want to talk too much about me, but now came some pictures with me. And um, yeah, here we have some, this is me. Um, uh, what is here going? Oh, sorry. I should press this. Yeah, I made some scores for movies. I have some pictures here. This is Dead of Book. He's a famous um, actor in Germany. It was, for the culture thing, it was um, a really good production about um, um, neo Nazi. You know neo Nazi? Yeah? And it's a true story. He fell in love with a Russian girl and in Brandenburg. And I make the score for it, and I play guitar, and I have to play, play the music of the, of, of the neo-Nazi scene. Interesting, because the, the, the director told me, oh, don't sing understandable words. I said, hey, how should I do it? You know, when we sing together, like four or five people in the studio, what should they do? <laughs> yeah? and, and so we used uh, old traditionals. Hab mein Wagen voll geladen, for example. Yeah, and you play, oh my God, and, and you play the guitar, and people like that. It was really interesting, but I made uh, scores when I was young, also with Katharina Tarbach here. I actually right now play in around eight bands. It's really much, you know, but when you have structure, it's no problem, yeah? So this is one of my jazz band, and here's with Matt, the band, we have a folk band. <laughs> <laughs> It is really cool. Yeah, uh, also, we have a banjo player in it. Here's my. This is my my uh, heart band. Uh, also, this is also my heart band. Mate. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, here we play his songs. <laughs> here we play my songs. Now, uh, and uh, Rudy. Um, these guys are not professional musicians. He sells um, in the supermarket. He sells um, wine. He built uh, beds for important people. Beds, is it right? Beds, yeah? And Andy is uh, a, not, not a doctor, a Krankenschwester. What does it mean? A nurse. A nurse, yeah. And uh, this is Philip. He is a German singer songwriter I work with in my studio. This is Keiji from South Africa. She's a wonderful singer. You ever heard her voice? You get like, Ugh. Yeah, uh, she has, um, she's the most talented girl I ever heard, yeah. Um, we recorded a track and I, I remember I started Georgia, I was really like, 
And I'm like, dee, 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 and then she started, Georgia. And she's she's quite now really, really popular. She sings a lot in Berlin, Edelweiss, with Mike Russell, and with, I forgot his name, is also very important. But this is my commercial project, played since 10 years. That this guy will make ACDC and play for radio stations around Germany. And um, I need this band really much to raise up my, my equipment for the studio. Because we play around 70, 80 gigs a year. And it's really cool. And yeah. So here we are in our showroom. We have a studio. I have a studio, 180 square meters in Potsdam. And we have a recording room, a big one. And one time I had a girl, she came up and said, Oh, I want to learn at your place. I want to make a little study. I said, What do you want to do? And she said, I want to make camera. And I said, oh, good that you are in a sound studio right now. And so um, we created a showroom. This is a format, a format there. A band can come in in one day and we are recording a band in one day. We make a music video, we're editing it and we put it on YouTube. And she did it really well. I did a really well job. And so we, until now, we recorded around 50 showrooms in one and a half year. And we had a lot of international guests from Ghana, from America, from Chile, uh, Italian, she's a really uh, popular singer in Italian, Laura Forci, Forci, I don't know, I hope I speak her well, Israel, he's from Argentina, Japan, ah, these are my favorite guys, and uh, you're also my favorite guy. <laughs> uh, he's from America, he's from Poland, uh, Russia, and France, and we did a whole documentary. Um, we, um, I want to know how to make a recording, how it sounds in different places. You know, the thing is that um, normally the studios are places where you go to, and you live the, the ambience of the studio. And with the technical change today, yeah, you have a lot of possibilities you can use. You can make a lot of good recordings in, in, in a lot of different places. And so I, uh, I tried to check out, I take a little money, and I got some money from the government. I had a producer, and we had 50,000 euro. And so we make a little journey to the east of, of Brandenburg. And uh, each day we had two concerts, some public concerts, but also concert we, we was on the big uh, target bar. What does it mean? Yeah, like, like on a lake, in the wood, you know. And uh, at this time, we recorded each concert and we make a live CD and also live videos. And I want to know how the song sounds in the wood. And I want to uh, uh, hear them sound in a, in a big um, concert atmosphere. We make Brandenburg Tag. It was a big place that 10,000 or 20,000 people was there. And uh, for me, it was an experience. And, after that, I know that the atmosphere, uh, I will talk later about it, is much more important than we think, you know? Um, the most people in this business, uh, also in the movie business, I think, uh, talk too much about the technique, yeah? And I, I work as a producer, um, Mark told you, and it was interesting, the first meetings we have all the time, you know, was talking about the camera and the system and the lightning, you know? And um, so I always sit there drink coffee and said, yeah, can we talk about the art? Yeah? And this was a really good project for me. Okay, I have to hurry. I have my classical music in the studio. This is uh, one of my recording rooms. I have two. Um, we make rock. I told you the young guy, he's 16, really talented. Um, also with strange pop music. And uh, <laughs> also hip hop. Productions. We did commercials for. I'm really happy because I have to live for money, like everybody, and I have two nice girls at home, my daughter and my wife. And my wife is also working, but it's cool to go to holidays and to have a car. <laughs> <laughs> so I made commercial for Audi, for for car industry, uh, for for V, for W, for W. I make the sound design. We win for this. We win a prize. It's kind of. Oscar for industrial films. Here um, I work a lot for the uh, BVE, BWE, this is um, um, energy. 
This is, um, what does it mean, a con uh, erneuerbare Energien? Recovery energy? New, ah, oh yeah, good. And I made a lot of footage for them, uh, demonstrate, uh, industrial steel movies, and also here we, oh, that was really interesting, not a good picture, but um, we make a road show with a tribe on a bicycle. He has a tandem, tandem, you know, the two guys on one, okay. And uh, on the back of the tandem are uh, politicians and fighter for the change, yeah. Sit there and he drives more than 2,900 kilometers with that. And we uh, put our camera guys there and we make a documentary and uh, every station we have 15 minute clips and this is the kind of work we're doing in the studio. Here we have a placer. This is a place where I do a lot of recording sessions and concerts. And it's, um, they want to rise it down, you know, two years ago, the whole place you see here. And we could uh, save it with a friend of mine and we put some important people there, like Gütla, he's a classical star on, on the trumpet. And we did a lot of productions there, it's a cool place right now. Um, um, the German uh, Deutschlandfunk, the German funk, 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 funk is music, uh, <laughs> record there as well. Uh, here we did an opera, Carmen, um, I was the production manager for, for it with Janet Astaire from, from France. Um, it's a cool place. She has a big university where the talented people of the whole world yeah, uh, um, get a free stipendium there to sing and to, to rehearse. And this is the Sibelius Orchestra, friends of me, um, Stanley Dodds. He's the first uh, violin of Ber Berlin Symphoniker. And we did in the Ufa Studios, we did the whole uh, Carmen. These are from the rehearsal. And I was a sponsor for that. Um, I, I don't want to do that, yeah, actually. Because this time I was, uh, yeah, I was a little bit uh, ill, yeah. And um, I asked Ari um, if they want to work with me on the opera. And then the money was not that big, you know. I, I thought, oh, we can't do it. And then they phoned me in the hospital. Oh, yeah, yeah, I have an opera coming. And yeah, yeah, but we don't do it. No, no, you get it for free. <laughs> That's a cheat. <laughs> so we did it. It was a wonderful time. This is uh, my, and uh, maybe in one year, he is the Geschäftsführer of my company. He is a yeah. really cool guy. He's a drummer. But he's really intelligent. And we work on a lot of studio projects together. We play a lot of songs together for, for important and unimportant people. <laughs> and it's a wonderful atmosphere. He's the... Uh, yeah, for me, he's the guy when you phone Chuck Esportsam, you have him on the line right now. And yeah, also pleasure. Um, some production shots I did. This is Seed. Um, I make a little video for them. This is uh, marriage, it's like what you do to earn money. This is uh, a lot of things. Here we have the last project was um, a double CD with. Um, Konstantin Becker in Stoppock, he, they are really famous Liedermacher in, in, in Germany and we recorded with 14 bands and singer-songwriters uh, a double album, is it right? Album, yeah? And we covered song of a dead German um, songwriter, Gundermann and Matt made the wonderful documentary about it and on the other album uh, there are songs of themselves, they sound like, like Gundermann um, so stop Okay. So now you know a little bit better me right now, I think, what I'm doing. And so let's talk about using new technology in a creative process. Um, for me, <laughs> oh, really, ooh, yeah. uh, too fast, yeah. Because when you speak really bad, you speak fast. People don't know it, recognize that. Um, I think there are not so many things, you know, but uh, I, um, after my last 14 years in this business, um, I'm 14 years, I've shook his person since 14 years, and I did a lot of jobs in that time. I recognized that times has changed uh, dramatically. Everybody knows it. It's not, I don't tell you something new. Yeah? But the problem is that the people think right now, I think, that um, I think you can't. Um, cook a five-star menu yeah, in a microwave in five minutes. But you can try it. 
And this is what my, uh, my feeling is about the new media today. Yeah? The thing is that um, we, 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 um, we uh, and, and, and went it and went and went uh, technology which make the life uh, in the media faster. For example, you can use a, a Canon 5D and make good pictures and you don't need much experience. Yeah? You have wonderful microphones like this microphone. It's a really wonderful microphone and I speak in a long distance to that. And, um, and you can produce clips on YouTube, on Facebook and everybody can see it and they look much, much better than in 10 years ago. Yeah? But the problem is that the people think when the technology gets faster, they have to get, go faster. You know, when you talk to somebody, also like me today, uh, and you ask them, yeah, why don't you, wh why are you so bad prepared, you know, then he will answer, uh, I don't have time. Also, we in invent technology, which makes us faster, we have not more time. Why? And the thing is that I think um, we get promised um, that uh, we don't need more time when we have fast technology. And this is not good. Uh, what I, I want to say is when you have the microwave, you know, if you spend a lot of time um, to prepare your food, and if you think about how long this and this and this, you know, then you can create a good food. But you need uh, three or four times more time than a professional will cook with all his equipment. But you can do it. And in my opinion, um, I focusing in my work more on the performance than on the technology. Yes, because um, this is what I want to say is uh, I, I focus more on the on, on the cooking because right now I'm not a millionaire. You know, I don't have this this huge mixing desk and I don't have uh, these nice girls sitting in the in the office and and found hello sugar spots <laughs> So why should I spend my, my time to, to, to spend money on that, you know? But I have a, a room and uh, I have an atmosphere and I have a place and I can talk with the people and can make a plan. And this is what really much changed in the creative way and, and how you use technology today. It's like, it's like Matt and me told in, in the car about that. It's like if you give someone a, a paper and a pen, he's not a, a, a writer. Yeah, but on, on the other way, the good way is that you have more possibilities right now because you can develop talents. Yesterday I had a school class in the studio because one of our students said, oh, can I come with my class and just like to record a song in your studio? And I said, man, it's okay, come. And, and then I, I heard, listened to, to, to him and a girl, they sing a song and I was really impressed. I was like, wow, you've got a lot of talent. And so you can develop talent. You don't need people who tell, tell you he's good, he's important. So you can show your talent to the World Wide Web. Yeah? And it's also that um, the world gets smaller because it gets bigger. That means um, you, you know, in, in the whole world you know, 10 famous people. You know? They are the stars of the whole world. You know? And then maybe you know some of your local, your local heroes, you know? And a long time ago, um, the countries were more diverse. So you had a lot of German pop stars. In America, they had their own pop stars, and, you know? And uh, the, the, the good thing is that now you have more concurrence, concurrence? Competition. Competition, thank you a lot. Um, competition. And we have to, I think we have to, uh, figure out how to use it. You have to work with that. And this is what we have to learn. We, we, we don't know right now. This is our, our, our big problem. A lot of people get in, in, in our um, media, in our um, business, get depressed of that. Because they think they are not good enough. They, uh, they see all, all the 10 people, you know, and they think how to come like them, and they know some talent, and really, really talented people, and they have only 100 clicks, you know, and they think, wow, they have 100 clicks. And, and we have to learn to, to work with that. We have to, uh, we have to know 
I think we have no chance um, to, to lie, you know? All what we can do is uh, have an idea and be a good cook with a sheep microwave. This is, this is I think, what technology does today. Um, the interesting thing is that um, I did a lot of recordings, like here, is uh, in the, in the uh, where is it, uh, where was it? <laughs> Udk University of yeah, Music, and um, you see all these expensive Blüthner uh, Flügel. Uh, yeah, you see this famous guy. The, the car costs fifty euro. Konstantin Decker. You see this really talented people there. I have some really expensive microphones because it makes my my life going easier. This is what I think you have to invest in. You make sound good microphones. Um, but here, this is really interesting. Um, I was a little shy at this time because my, my rack, I had a rack, it was borrowed to some other productions. I come up with a 150 euro audio interface. Yes? That oh, sounds great. And the laptop. You know? Um, if you want, you can phone me. I sent you a copy of the CD so you can listen to that. Or maybe you watch on my website when the movie is on. And, in, and, and the whole recording session, what really interesting was, this is what, how to use time, yeah? Um, we went there, I raised up in 10 minutes my stuff, these two ambient mics, this mic uh, as a mono mic between voice and piano, two piano mics and one mic for his voice. And he came in and what he said was, really interesting, he's a professional musician team as well, he said, oh, I need 15 minutes to practice. And this time, he had a rehearsal of 50 mini, each of them. After 10 minutes, they go together and they figure out each note. Then I press the recording button, and this time I checked all the gains and all this stuff. Then I press the recording and he did one take with any, without any mistake. Then he told me, oh, right now we have a technically good take. Now let's do one with feeling. And then he did one with a feeling. And after that, he looked at me and said, are you happy? I was like, oh, yes, I'm really happy. That was a wonderful take. And he said, yeah, and maybe if you find the mistake, uh, take the take from the first. And this is how I think how you produce today. This guy composed music for the Chinese um, circus, national circus. This guy writes so many songs, has so many albums. You can Google him, Konstantin Decker. And he now, perfectly for me, he's, he's 70, uh, no, he's 73 or, yeah, 73 years old. And he was in jail because he take cokes. So at this time, I, want to, I don't want to work with him. But uh, <laughs> right now, he's, he's out of it. And um, this time, it's always the perfect English guy, yeah. And what, what I think I recognized is also, uh, I want to say that some people, get better because they can reflect them better. When I was young and I wanted to make a record, it was really difficult. You had this old cassette player, and when you had it in the GDR, you don't have it, but later I had it, and you press the record button, you play it, and it sounds weird. And you thought, oh, it sounds weird because uh, the technique is bad, yeah? And also when you want to make a recording, he has to go to the big recording studios, so there's a guy who said, you are good or you're not good, and you know that? And right now, in my production way, I go back to the old cassette way. So if I compose songs, or if I make arrangements, I put my handy, and I play it on the handy, and then I show it to the people. And then the people like the song, it's a good song, and when not, I throw it off. A lot of people don't know that um, artists um, are full of ideas. So uh, they don't hang on the 10 songs like Lady Gaga, you know, sorry, she's really good, sorry. Like, uh, it's not so good, Rihanna, okay? Um, or Jennifer Lopez. Okay, Jennifer Lopez is there. <laughs> and no, they are full of ideas. So that means they have public heart, they composed maybe 2,000, 3,000 songs. And, and a good artist is not, um, uh, I think a good artist is not uh, angry about that somebody steal his idea. When this idea gets popular, he can be proud of it because it was his idea. In my opinion, it's only my opinion, you know? So, um, what you can do with the new technology is be an artist, more than ever. 
Je trouwt niet uh, uh, um, um, uh, mogelijkheden. Wat does het mean? Je trouwt niet dan, je hebt het. Ja? En wat ik really want to say is, als ik talk met Matt, when you show to the internet and you show the world a good performance on a bad medium, yeah, it's much better than a bad performance on a good medium. Yeah, listen to the, to the stars when they started. Um, I, I recognized that uh, when I was a student, um, I drive also a lot of trucks for Ari, yes, and then I drive to London, I could speak really good English in, in this place. And uh, I listened to, to some upcoming stars and they sound not good, but they impressed everybody. Like, like for example, Pink, Pink first song, Just Like a Pill, sounds horrible. It was an electric drum, it was really, wah! And then and the sample rate was, was broken, you could hear it on the voice, yeah? But it was a hit because she performed it good. And uh, what I want to say is uh, just focus on, on, on being a cook and don't focus on, on the things you need to create your media. I repeat myself, sorry. And um, yeah, this is what I want to say. Did I forget something? No, maybe I have a picture. No, this was all. <laughs> so I have my cards here. When you want to follow me or want to visit my site, you can. You can come to the studio. We can drink a coffee. Fuji is there. Matt is there. Okay, thanks. He'll be taking questions after the. Oh, man. Is there sound? Hopefully this will work. I'm not a Windows 8.1 guy, I have to admit. I'm barring this laptop. I'm going to show you a trailer uh, of the film Beerland that I made. This is the English version of the trailer. There's a German version. Uh, just to sort of get in the, get in the mood of, of this of this search that I started about two and a half years ago about why, why we associate beer with Germany so much, or at least that was my problem, or at least that's what I thought. I thought that there was something about it. There was some, something about this, this beer, about Oktoberfest, and about all this coming together and drinking it fascinated me as a, as a filmmaker. And I thought there were a lot of stories there that weren't being told. So I'll give you, I'll give you the trailer. And uh, yeah, here it is. Let's hope the sound works. Okay. No, I'm not hearing sound. I should be hearing sound right there. Let's turn it up. Let's try it again. Yeah. There. So that was that, sorry. <laughs> so, let me see if I can get this going. I feel kind of. That was the movie poster. Yeah, just briefly about myself. I, uh, I don't want to go into too much detail. I make all kinds of films, actually. I would consider myself more of a storyteller because I play music and I write. And I always wanted to make feature films. I'm maybe like you guys who are inspired by silly movies like Star Wars and I thought oh, I, could, I, I want to make it. Um, but anyway I realized that uh, there were a lot of stories that weren't being 
told for some reason that fascinated me. I came to a point where I realized uh, life was more interesting than, than, than art, or this whole art imitates reality. That, and I realized that actually I need to take my camera and talk to people and start filming. So I sort of became a documentary filmmaker when I came to Germany. I studied film uh, at Cal State in San Diego, worked on a lot of films, met a Germ beautiful German <laughs> woman who eventually became my wife, and uh, I landed here uh, with this sort of film degree. I didn't know what I was going to do with it, but I wanted to see the world. I was really, I was like, oh, I, I, what's going on here? And, um, and therefore, early on, I, I realized that, uh, you know, how do you tell a story? How do you take something from reality and, and, and make it to where people uh, can, can follow your, your idea? And for me, this is where this cultural building became a, a lifelong topic of mine, not just because I'm married. If someone's married to a, someone from another, another culture, early on you're always like, well, uh, you sort of blame it. Oh, that's the way the Germans think. Oh, the Americans think this way. And you're always talking about that. In fact, she studied to be a, uh, in international relations at the, at the TU, so she should be an expert in, in international uh, relations. Um, but the point is, is that this idea always fascinated me, uh, how little we know about each other, and how little we know about our own, uh, the cultures that we're living in. Um, then I started watching German documentaries to sort of learn the, the trade and see how people were doing it. I've been many years here at this uh, Berlin Island Film Festival. I was uh, watching movies, meeting people, and, and just learning the, the trade. And, and to make a long story short, the reality is that um, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a bottomless keg, but, but where do you begin and, and how do you find the story that is going to sort of uh, bridge a gap between, or, or bridge the gap between these two ideas of, of, of the thing that always fascinates me and always makes me wonder why, why people have a certain way of thinking and they just don't want to change their mind about it. They, they think that's just the way it is. And, and, and they don't explore this idea. And I think that docu in documentary filmmaking, you have a chance to, to, to show reality, or at least how it is now, and let people talk about it and, and give people a voice and, 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 and get to us to a point where we realize it's not just about this one way of thinking. There's a lot of way of thinking. And, and this is probably, you're the, the experts more, more than I am in, in this field. But, uh, but uh, let, let's start with an example. Um, how many of you, um, Th would consider yourself uh, beer drinkers. R raise your hand. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's pretty good. And uh, how many would consider yourself? Well, I'm a wine drinker, actually. Oh, we got some of those. Oh, good. Well, now we're going. How many people just don't touch alcohol what whatsoever? Oh, God, a few of those. That's good. In these three groups, already you have sort of certain mindsets and think, well, you know, this is the way the beer drinkers think, this is the way the, the, uh, the wine drinkers are, and so on and so forth. Um, and then I, I'm, I would consider myself a beer drinker, I have to admit. Um, I, I, but the, 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 it's really not a film for me about beer, as much as it is about national identity and how we group ourselves in these, how, how we can make a drink. Uh, into a, a part of our identity. And, and, and just already thinking about that, I'm a wine drinker, what does that mean actually? What does it mean to be a beer drinker? The same question, what does it mean to be German? You know, what's it mean to be American? After, now I've lived here since, since 95, I, I'm still asking myself that question. But is it a question that we really uh, have an answer to, in fact? And a lot of people have uh, opinions about oh, beer, that's my beer, this is the best beer, and so on and so forth. And that, that expression of, of of identity always fascinated me, and I and I and I looked at films, and I said, "There's not a film that's showing this. There, there's films about how to brew beer. We can go online and figure that out. But what is? How does it define us as people? And 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 how does it define the Germans in a funny way? And I think you can also be be funny about it, uh, because sometimes we take ourselves too seriously. So my first quote. This is a shortened. Uh, I did a. Funny enough, I did a a, a Vortrag, a presentation for the the drinking industry here. They invited me to Dusseldorf and say, you're an American, uh, you've been studying this beer thing and now uh, people are drinking less beer. Can you tell us what, you, what your, your studies, what you found? I didn't think I was gonna be a beer expert, but I was like, well, this is what I, so my questions were like, you know, why, why talk about the German relationship to beer? It's what I was telling you. Be, uh, is it a fine waste of time or a, a fass ohne Boden? I think we, 
we talk about this in, in this discussion of, of uh, why uh, this is part of me is, is interesting. And beer is not just a drink here. Hmm? It's rooted deeply in, in, in their culture. Um, and I realized that in asking this question, uh, why is beer so important to you? Uh, it became a catalyst, um, releasing stories about them. And, and they would start telling me stories. We were, we were far away from the topic of beer, about growing up around a brewery, about how it was after the war, uh, the fact that the, the brewers uh, had um, always something to give to eat. It's, it's, it, there's no other industry in the world that's so uh, closely, or in, in Germany, closely linked to all these groups that they, that they donate and help, whether it's a soccer organization or whether it's a local uh, helping raise money for something. The, the, the brewers were always really connected or a part of the, their, their towns. It's a regional story. And also good Good time stories, uh, in, in Germany they call it Glücksmomente, we remember things. Uh, and these stories, through, through just this question, a simple question, why is beer important to you? I was learning about my new neighbors. So how did I become fascinated with beer culture? It's, it's, it's something that as I, before I could speak German, I, I, I saw uh, people sitting in pubs and drinking together in a, in a way that we didn't have in America. I'll, for us, growing up in the USA, it was beer was a forbidden fruit, yeah? And here it seemed like it was always people outside drinking. It was just something totally normal. Why was that? Why was it in my culture, it's, you're not allowed uh, to drink and all these things? Okay, it has a lot to do with driving. And here it's some sort of uh, communication. Uh, during the day, I would always be uh, surprised about how, uh, how few people uh, seem to talk to each other on the... Uh, on the, on the uh, Maybe you noticed that, I don't know. But it's just, I, for me, I noticed that the people were, they sit in the trains very quiet, or I'd go to buy something, bread at the, at the bakery, and it would be like, here, just no, no interaction. And then later on at night, I'd be walking around, and then people are talking and having a great time and sitting there, and they'll have a beer in their hand. I was like, is it really the beer, or is it something else? So I kind of thought, there's, they're very communicative, excuse me. So is beer culture important for Germans? How do they see it themselves? That was my driving question. I have to say that whenever I start a film, I think it's really important, if you're gonna make a film, that you have what I call the driving question. It's the one question that every scene in the film is trying, or coming a little closer to answering. And for me, the driving question is why is beer culture more than just brewing great beer, but an expression of identity and community? Um, it's a big question. How do you answer that? Um, I think when you, if, if you, if you want to make a film, also you should go into it with, with an open question. You shouldn't go try and make a film where, where it's like, I know the answers, this is what I want to show, and then you just systematically try and work it all out. It doesn't work that way. Things have to happen in front of the camera as they're going. You have to go in with an open mind. You have to empty your beer glass, half full, so that something else can come inside of it. I think too many people are going about making films with this idea of like, I want to show something, I want to uh, show this and this and this and this and this. That's great, that's good, you should do that. But um, you should be asking a lot more questions. And, and in fact, you should be okay with the answer not being what you expected or maybe uncomfortable. So um, I thought beer <laughs> was a often funny multifaceted expression of national identity. I thought this was really weird for me. All the different ways, Google beer sometime, beer Germany, and see the kind of things that you come up with. It's just, it's, it, it's being seriously silly. And I think that's, that's important. Uh, yeah, there's, there's, in America, there's craft brewers brewing and here Hopfen, Witch Hops and everything and all that stuff. And people are proud about their beers and that's, but there's something going on there. And, I, and, I, and I'm still fascinated with the different ways uh, people get excited about beer here. Um, one example was, uh, which, which started my thinking with, how am I gonna tell the story of the history, which, which I always, I love history. Uh, my history professor once say, uh, history doesn't repeat itself, historians repeat themselves. And, um, and yet there are things in history that we find, like in these old beer ads, 
uh, who are these guys? You know, they're having a great time and stuff. And, and it was like the, the folk history that we never, that we never learned in, in, uh, at school. We learn about, well, at least the way I was taught American history uh, in a small town in Liberty, Missouri. <laughs> Uh, but anyway, it's, 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 it's fascinating to, to, to hear the folk story, and that to me is why I like to play folk music with, with Jörg as well, as, or, or music in general, is because in the text of, these music, of this music, you hear what's going on in the soul of, of the people and what the, the textbooks often leave out, unfortunately. Uh, this led me to, as an example, uh, an interesting man in Cologne, if you've ever been to Cologne, you like Kolsch. He's the Geschäftsführer of Gaffel Kolsch. I didn't know that at the time. The reason I'm telling you this, why? It's because uh, he has the biggest collection of beer advertisements in, in perhaps the world. And he's a wealthy man, but I was privileged to go down in his basement where they used to beer uh, brew these uh, tons of beer and where they would store it cold. And he has just so many, what he calls real pieces of art. And this is Litfast art. And they're big, uh, back then they used to advertise on these big uh, posters called, lit, uh, or on these, um, geez, I don't know the English word for that. What do you call these? In the, these uh, you see them on the streets. And, and it's, it's, it's poster art on these round cylinders, uh, Litfast. Litfast. And um, they're huge. I mean, they're the size of, of this wall. And, and the artists were also given the tats, it's super interesting, uh, to, to paint this feeling of, of Gemütlichkeit, of, uh, how do you, of, of beer bindet, and all these emotions. So, so he, would, he has collected these, these original paintings and drawings, and, and also the advertisement showing these happy Germans. <laughs> Elements within the film, which is, and for me this is the, 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 the cultural aspect, is this question, is beer really a culture, or is it just an excuse to get drunk, you know? And, and there, I, I believe it is a culture, and, and a lot of this stuff can show us and teach us about how the people are, even if it's just uh, advertisements. Okay, let me, let me show you this part. Let me set it up real quick, is that in the film I drive around in a Carmen Ghia, uh, and, and I'm trying to uh, visit places. People say, oh, you should go there, you should go find out this, or you should go check this out. And in this, in this part of the film, uh, I was told to go visit uh, something called the reenactment of the beer war. I mean, in America we have civil war reenactments, and there's something like a oh, beer war? What is that? I've never heard of a beer war. This is the beer war. And he just got done explaining to me that um, they raised the price of beer. Two cents. Two cents. And that created a, a huge uproar because people were, were paid in naturale. That means they were paid in, 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 in goods and not just money. So that was like losing a lot of money and the people just went crazy. And uh, they re reenact this, and it's amazing that, that so many people come to see this show. And I said, why has this never been filmed before? So here we, we <laughs> here's, here's, and I'm going and, and to let this run for maybe like, if it's okay, I don't know if you guys, if maybe a few minutes to just watch what happens. And then, and then you'll see how I included the, the advertisements of uh, Herr Becker. Okay. <laughs> On a skateboard, huh? 